as we get started, I'd like to review some basic integrals real quick just to make sure that our foundation is secure so that as we go on to learn more complicated methods of integration, we know that we can rely on some basic ones that you should have seen in Calc 1. So this should be mostly review, but if any of this is unfamiliar, you can go back and review from Calc 1 or um, dig in from here. So to begin with, when we're talking about integrals, that's the same thing as an antiderivative, right? So if I use the term integral or antiderivative, we mean the same thing, more or less. Um, specifically, the antiderivative is the indefinite integral, which, again, that term should be somewhat familiar to you now. But the basic concept is we have, if we have some function f of x, we can take its derivative, and this is what you spent most of Calc 1 learning how to do, is how to differentiate a function to find its derivative f prime of x. If, on the other hand, we want to work backwards and we want to find what function this one is the derivative of, if we're given a function and we're, and we're told find what function this is the derivative of, that's the same as anti-differentiating or integrating. So we talk about the indefinite integral or the antiderivative meaning the same thing. So for example, let's say a really simple one, f of x is x squared. The derivative of that would be 2x. So then we can work in the opposite direction and say the antiderivative of 2x dx. And I'll pause here and just remind you of this notation. The dx tells us roughly what variable we're using to integrate with respect to. If you take calc 3, you'll dig a little bit deeper into that and talk more about what that actually is. And we'll see a little bit more of it in this class. We'll talk about that differential just a little bit. But for now, we can think of it just as telling us what variable we're integrating with respect to. And so whatever's between the integral symbol and the dx, that's the function we're trying to integrate. Or in other words, we're trying to find what function has 2x as its derivative. And so we know pretty easily that that's going to be x squared. Now this is where I would pause and ask, is that it? Is that the entire answer? And you should know that that's not the entire answer. There's something missing. What's missing is plus c. Now why on earth is that plus c there? The idea is not only is 2x the derivative of x squared, but it's also the derivative of x squared plus 1, or x squared plus 2, or x squared minus 7. Whatever constant I tack on here has no impact on the derivative. In other words, x squared plus c, no matter what c is, the derivative of all of those functions will be 2x. So when we account for that, if we work backwards, when we find the antiderivative of 2x, we have to account for that and say, well, it could be x squared plus or minus any constant, theoretically. Now, that could be 0 or it could be anything else, but we account for that by including this plus c. And you'll just get used to doing this. Whenever you do an integral, you always include a plus c if it's an indefinite integral, if you're just finding the antiderivative. When we do definite integrals, of course, that goes away, and we'll show that in just a second. But just remember to do that. It's easy to forget. It's something that's really easy to leave off, but when you're doing your work, just make sure you include plus c when appropriate. So from there, we have the integral representing the antiderivative, but there's another side to the integral. So on one hand, the integral is the antiderivative. On the other hand, the integral represents the area under a curve. And that area under the curve, we might draw a picture that looks something like this. So there's some function, some generic function, and we're looking for the area between two points. So we want this area right here. And the area, with a little bit of work in Calc 1, you figured out that you could represent this as the integral from A to B of whatever this function is. So there's two sides to an integral. It means two different things. It means the antiderivative, it also means the area under the curve. And the fact that these two are connected, the fact that these are the two sides of the same entity, 
that the same object, the antiderivative or the integral, can represent two different things um, is, is really a fundamental, beautiful result of calculus. And it's part of what makes this uh, so interesting, that there's this geometric result and this more algebraic, more uh, theoretical result. And the two of them have this merger, and they really form the same object, this antiderivative. Um, so the, the fundamental theorem of calculus is part of what ties these together um, as it, it connects the area under the curve with the uh, antiderivative. So for example, we can do something like if we have the function, let's say we have the function 2x to keep things really simple. And we want to find the area from 1 to 3. That would be the antiderivative from 1 to 3 of 2x dx. And to do this definite integral, you should remember that the first step is to do the indefinite integral. And then to apply the limits. Now notice that I left off the plus c. Why did I leave off plus c? If I included that, it would drop off in the next step. So when we do this, when we apply these limits, and this notation that I have here at the end, this long vertical bar with a 1 at the bottom and a 3 at the top, is basically just a note that tells me to do the next step, which is first to plug in 3, and then to plug in 1 for x, everywhere that I see x, and then subtract those. And notice that when you do this, if we include the plus c, it's going to drop off every time. It's always going to cancel out when you subtract the two. So to take a shortcut, we generally drop off the plus c when we're doing a definite integral. So in this case, we'd end up with 9 minus 1, and the answer is 8. That's the area under the function 2x from 1 to 3, which you could also find out geometrically. But for more complicated functions, uh, the integral is the way to go. So when we do applications, we are going to have definite integrals every time. And so part of the problem is going to be figuring out what function we're integrating, and part of the problem is going to be figuring out what the limits of integration are. And that's kind of the two sides to the problem when we're doing application problems. When we're just doing integrals by themselves, we'll generally be given an integral, and we won't have to do work to set it up. But if we're setting one up, you need to look for the function, and then you need to look for the limits of integration, and then go from there. And what we'll do next is we'll go through and review some of the basic integration rules that you learned back in Calc 1, and we'll do some examples just to um, review those and make sure that we're all confident with the basics of integration.